I think music is the most direct art form there is. You don't have to actively look at something, you don't have to go anywhere. It lands with everyone really differently, but very directly. You can't ignore music, it just goes straight into your soul. There's multiple dimensions to what drives you, but the thing that makes me really understand every time that this is what I need to do is when you write a song and you write something or you, you make a sound and it fits with the feeling that you have when you feel like the puzzle sort of clicks. The thing that you've made makes sense completely with what you're feeling or that thing that you're thinking about. I think there is a lot of freedom for female artists by using technology. Since I've been producing my own music and engineering my own stuff, I've been completely independent and I can make anything that I want and I can express myself really directly without having to ask anyone, yeah, I want something that sounds like this and um, can you please make it? Technology doesn't have to be masculine and there's a lot of ways to use technologies that can be very expressive and very artistic. I do a lot of stuff with my voice, processing my voice over and over again, putting it through all kinds of effects and sampling it again and then triggering it again. Most of my tracks, something is going on with my voice, which translates really well to what I want to do on stage or what I can do on stage using the Mimi Glove. They're really a tool for me to perform all those layers that I make in the box to get those out again and show them in an engaging way to the audience so they understand where all the sounds are coming from. Sometimes the movements look like the sound or the lyric. That is something that we've been really exploring. By using the gloves, I can really show off a lot of the things that I've made in the studio or I'm actually making on the stage live there. That makes it more interesting for the audience to really see and engage with all of those electronic parts in the music rather than just have it on the track. The more minimal it is, the more precise all the sounds need to be to make it make sense as a whole piece. Adam Stark, he's a um, software developer. Basically he's in charge of everything interactive that's happening in the show, how the gloves are talking to the sound, how the gloves are talking to the visuals. He's written this very specific piece of software that only works with my show. So what we were just doing is um, syncing up the video with the song. We use OSC messages to make sure that the video starts at exactly the same point as when I start the music. He's working very closely with Eduardo Fitch, who's the art director. He's basically designing how the visuals look. There's also a lot of video material in the visuals that he shot and he art directed and edited and did all the effects on. Eduardo has had the idea that we're going to project the, um, this image of uh, the shell onto uh, Shibal's body. The shell heart. Yeah, it's like a heart. Um, and like when we, when we render it, it's going to, it pulses in time in the music. Choreographer Leila Reese. It's been so exciting to work with her because for the past year and a half, I've been doing gigs with the gloves and I've always been super aware that I move and how I move, but I, I, I just didn't know where to put these things all the time. And Leila is, has just an insane good eye. To use the movement that I already have to make the sound happen and turn that into something that's also aesthetically beautiful and meaningful and make me feel comfortable. And she really pushes me, but she also really knows where my limits are as a non-dancer. On the lighting design, we've got Natalie Rowland. She's done some things that totally reimagined the songs and the meaning of the song. She's also been super bright and thinking about the set as a whole. 
my sound engineer is Rob Donnelly Jackson. He also worked in theatre for a long time, so he has a lot of experience of working on bigger shows in theatre venues, working with other types of microphones and stuff like that. That's been really helpful because I do all of my engineering myself and the gloves and singing and moving and visuals. Also having to engineer the whole show would have just been a bit too insane. So I'm really, really grateful that he's there so I can trust him that everything in the room will sound as I want it to. Last but not least, my producer Claire Eve. She completely gave me confidence, helped me with the Arts Council application. From the moment that I met her and she said, okay, let's do this, everything also happened. We came here to the University of Westminster, but we were like, okay, we're doing this. And as soon as you're like, we're doing this, this is what's going to happen, people believe you. <laughs> I've got a great team and it's been really, really great that I got this opportunity from the Arts Council to work with them for this amount of time. I've really come to appreciate the process much more than the result. You know, I just want to stay in this room with these five people and just continue this process. And I just feel like we're just getting into it. I think I'm getting closer and closer to what I think it's about. And I'm extremely happy at this moment <laughs> because I'm feeling that and I'm feeling it so strong and I'm so not occupied with all the other things.